Have you ever wondered how SpaceX will manage to do launches from different zones? How about the sea and land-based launches? To find out about all this, keep watching our video. To all the SpaceX fans out there, hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, we warmly welcome you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an update. Sea-based launchings are more complex than land-based launchings. It's a smaller target area and the drone ship itself is consistently moving due to the motion of the sea. Once SpaceX successfully landed a Falcon 9 first stage on land at Cape Canaveral back in December, it would be reasonable to question why all the future launches aren't attempted on stable ground. SpaceX manufacturers launch vehicles to operate its launch provider services and to achieve its various exploration objectives. SpaceX currently manufactures and operates the Falcon 9 full thrust medium lift launch vehicle family and the Falcon Heavy heavy lift launch vehicle family, both of which are powered by SpaceX Merlin engines and use VTVL technologies to reuse the first stage. The Falcon 1 was the first privately developed liquid fuel launch vehicle to reach orbit and it used SpaceX's Merlin and Kestrel engines for its first and second stages respectively. Between 2006 and 2009, it was launched five times from Amelic Island. SpaceX Starship is intended to be a fully reusable super heavy lift launch vehicle. Meanwhile, Falcon Heavy, the FH, is a super heavy lift space launch vehicle designed and manufactured by SpaceX. The Falcon Heavy is a variant of the Falcon 9 launch vehicle comprising of three Falcon 9 first stages, a reinforced center core, and two additional side boosters. All three boosters are designed to be recovered and reused. Although expendable flights are possible to increase the payload capacity, SpaceX is developing the vehicle as a self-funded private space flight project, while the upper stage of the Starship is currently being tested only at suborbital altitudes. Starship will serve as the second stage on a two-stage to orbit launch vehicle, the Super Heavy. SpaceX refers to the combination of spacecraft and the booster as the Starship. In regard to this, a lot is happening in our space industry. We are all aware of the fact that SpaceX never gets steady. We gradually see them progressing rapidly. Either it's day or night, their progress never stops. We look at segment number six of the Starship launch support tower. It moves from the Sanchez site to the construction site. We appreciate the SpaceX workforce for handling these segments routinely. This launch tower will play a vast role in orbiting Starships and super heavy flights. The timeline of this project is short for such an enormous project. There is no doubt to the fact that SpaceX is no behind in settling the records. SpaceX has a workforce that works 24-7 on this project. Therefore, we absolutely can't deny how rapidly it's been progressing. We know all the updates about the launch support tower. Now the biggest question is, what will be the workhorse of that tower? How will the Starships and Super Heavy Boosters be stacked on top of it? Now let's talk about the heavy lifters for the Super Heavy Launcher. The NOV ADS-30Q. These automated drawworks systems, or ADS, are equipped with AC motors that provide significantly more performance and require approximately half space and weight with less maintenance than traditional drawworks. The AC electric-powered single-speed gear-driven, or SSGD, drawworks offer a design unique to the industry. By powering drawworks with AC motors, we created single shaft, single speed drawworks with hoisting performances compared to conventional drawworks. The result is a simple, lightweight design with few mechanical parts and a small footprint. These drawworks require minimal maintenance and are entirely self-contained. Dual speed gear driven drawworks are setting new standards in the drilling industry. These AC drawworks feature a two-speed helical gearbox mounted directly on the drum shaft, which is ideal for any application for which size and weight are critical factors. The two-speed functionality provides fast hoisting speeds and heavy hook load hoisting capabilities. The new DSGD CX425 drawworks is a simple, modular design that provides the flexibility needed for most drill floor configurations. The system is already installed at the tower, similar to being installed on an oil rig. Theoretically, this could power the stacking crane to slow down the booster without using counterweights. The big advantage for SpaceX is 
the system that is being tested at a land orbital launch will already be present on sea launch platforms. During this, all construction, SpaceX manages to test prototypes. They tested NASA spaceflight and the BN 2.1. Now, if we observe the orbital launch mount, there is a bit of modification here. Some curved steel grinders have also been spotted on the site. Next, we have a transportation jig. This is more like a part used for many different purposes. Then we have the clamps, which have already been manufactured and integrated into the launch table. Along with this, the inner ring of the launch table is attached. It has 11 meter diameter, wider than the booster. Beneath that, the hydraulic arms are attached, which will retract once the booster lifts during the launch. We are aware of the fact that, you know, for orbital launches, a payload requires an arc-like trajectory with sufficient high velocity to complete an orbit around the Earth. Depending on the rocket's velocity and the mass of its payload, there may not be enough fuel to get back to the launch pad. Bringing a drone ship away from land and out closer to the trajectory of the rocket can reduce the fuel required for a landing. For certain missions, this may be the only option for rocket recovery. SpaceX has invested a lot of energy into their live stream coverages of launches. The coverages has included co-hosts that explain what's happening throughout the launch and other interviews to provide more detailed background information about the mission. Elon Musk in Mobile World Congress 2021 said, We're hoping to do our first orbital launch attempt in the next few months. We certainly have a booster and a ship, an orbital capable booster and orbital capable ship and the orbital launch site will be ready within the next month or so. Three years ago, SpaceX CEO and founder Elon Musk told reporters that the company expected each Falcon 9 to fly 10 times with few renovations in between flights, and as many as 100 times before retirement. SpaceX recently achieved that milestone with another booster, the B-1051. That launcher was the first to reach 10 flights and is not stopping anytime soon. According to Musk, 10 flights is not hard limit or magic number. As the company continues to refine its refurbishment process, it will continue to push each Falcon to the breaking point, he said. After B-1058 made history with the first astronaut mission to launch from Florida, since the end of the shuttle program in 2011, the booster also launched a communications satellite for South Korea's military transporter 1. Having a fleet of flight-proven rockets at its disposal allows SpaceX to keep up with its rapid launch. However, SpaceX chooses to fly its own payload on boosters with a high flight count, saving its newer boosters for paying customers. NASA and the US Space Force recently granted the company approvals to fly their payloads on reused rockets, with SpaceX flying its first crew of astronauts on a reused rocket on April 23rd. These are some genius moves from SpaceX, along with some updates on its recent project and predictions on what will happen next. Exciting, right? We are all excited to know what will happen next since the corporation is working day and night on these projects with dedication. We can see progress happening so quickly. So guys, that is all from the SpaceX industry. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and stay tuned for more updates on SpaceX. Stay safe.